Hi, this is Nisha, and here we really like firearms from Czechoslovakia and, of course, today still the Czech Republic. We also like Polish guns, Russian guns. Okay, we like guns. But really, we've, Czech guns have always been very finely made. And here we have really their first, in a sense, at least the first common and whatnot. And we haven't really done a video on this. This is the Bruno Vzor model of 1924, or just VZ24. Short rifle, chambered four, eight millimeter Mauser, 7.92 by 57. Yes. And to talk about this gun, I thought we'd bring out a couple of other Mauser types here in the short rifle scene, just to flesh things out. Here we have a World War I German Carabiner 98, later designated 98A. Not 98AZ, but we've got a separate video on why I say that. Also chambered for 8 millimeters. it happens. Then we have a relatively early production. Nazi German. Car 98K for Kurs. Again, an 8 millimeter. And finally, because it was to hand and why not, I brought out a gun I've had the longest out of all these. My Yugoslavian Zastava model 1948 M48. And this is actually one of the A variants with some stamped parts. And like the rest, in 8mm. In fact, all of these have very similar barrel lengths as well. So how do these relate to the check gun? Well, let's begin with this Car 98, Car 98A. This was the carbine version of the Gewehr 98, the G98 Mauser, used by Imperial Germany in World War I. Now we have a history video on the German Mauser, so I'm only going to talk about how this relates to the Czech VZ-24. This is what got the pattern going. It has a 23.2 inch barrel, full length handguard as you see. The barrel band is, has a screw here, it's hinged here. It has the adjustable flat rear sight, unlike the Gewehr 98, which has the so-called roller coaster. Now this has a turned down bolt. This is also quite interestingly a small ring, even though it's got the 98 style action, essentially cock on open. We have the pass through for the German sling, the hole in the stock for disassembly, flat butt plate, finger grooves. This was a, you know, a, a good popular gun, especially with the stormtroops the Trench Raiders of World War I. And these guns got around. Quite a few nations ended up with Canani 8As. Poland especially liked it, even making a, a central clone of it. But this started that trend because the original Gewehr had a long barrel, 29 inches plus, and that also added weight. Now, Czechoslovakia was basically formed from the ashes of the old Habsburg dynasty, the old Austro-Hungarian Empire. So it did not really come to be until, well, 1919 really, but 1918 officially on paper. One thing they inherited was a small arms factory located in the town of Bruno, which is where, you know, basically CZ we know today. They also inherited and were given as partial reparations and this and that and the other a considerable number of Gewehr 98 Mausers, which they designated 
is the VZ98. Again, VZ just meaning Vzor, meaning model. And they would even, very soon, at the Bruno factory, start making their own slightly altered variant as the VZ9822. It had the long 29 inch barrel still. Really about the big difference was they got rid of the roller coaster sight, at least eventually. Some of the early production ones did have it as they were using up parts, but they would start to use flat sights. And this was really what they would use very briefly. They would start experimenting with short rifles and carbines using kind of the 98A pattern as a guide. They would kind of try a 21 and a half inch barrel. They would have a prototype known as the VZ23 with some different features. They would tinker this and that, eventually settling on the VZ24. This has a 23.2 to 23.3, depending on who you ask, barrel. It's actually quite svelte. It's classified as a short rifle because it's not a true carbine. The barrel's long enough. We're a little over nine pounds, nine and a quarter, give or take, if it's loaded. And this gun is really quite interesting. The interwar period saw a lot of surplus weapons from World War I. So a lot of nations weren't buying guns. So Bruno, CZ, knew if they made a gun, a new gun to sell on the essentially commercial market, they would have to have a leg up over the surplus guns. Now what the Czech government did, they pr let CZ become privatized so they could sell internationally which this went into effect around the same time this was going into production. So this let them really export and, and draw money into the very new nation of Czechoslovakia. Also, the Czech military did adopt this as its standard issue, replacing the older Gewehr 98 pattern guns. Again, in 1924. Kind of like I said, development was kind of 22, 23. And these were starting to see service by 1926 and starting to see foreign contracts by about the same time. So what did Bruno do to really entice people? Well, like I said, we have a 23 and some change barrel. This is still firing 8mm Mauser as the standard. We have a protected front sight. This is a removable unit, which is a screw. It's not clipped on like the later German. We have a German-style bayonet lug, although the bayonet actually has a ring to go around the muzzle to make it stronger. Also has the cutting edge on the opposite side from the German, which is kind of interesting. We have a typical cleaning rod, although this is of a unique length. It's not really German length, it's its own length. The front barrel band is pretty standard with a spring. Interestingly, the rear band is held on with a screw, like we saw on that Car 98A. Also, we have a full length upper handguard, like we saw on the Car 98A as well as a flat rear sight, like we saw in the Car 98A. Different styling, but same basic principle. We also have finger grooves, which were a later addition to the Gewehr 98. They're kind of offset to be a little more ergonomic. This furniture is made out of hardwood, walnut, integral five round mag, we have a very typical large ring receiver. We have a very typical cock on open action. No last round hold open by default, although you could always put in a follower. Interestingly, they kept the straight bolt handle, although they would offer turn down versions for various contracts. Typical Mauser safety. Three position wing. That's all very standard. Even underneath, we're pretty standard. Here's our machined floor plate. We're movable, machined here. We have two large screws and two captive capture screws to hold them in. Very standard. We have a semi pistol grip stock. Again, very standard. Has a unit disc on the stock, which is something earlier German guns had. A lot of guns have unit discs. I think they're neat. We have a standard flat butt plate.
flipping it over, the sling swivels are a bit unique. We have a typical bottom one here. We don't have the German style pass through. We have a swivel. And we have a second one here, kind of not in the best position because it's in the grip area. It doesn't intrude as much as uh, some in this area could, depending on where they're located. But I've have, I have seen these removed because they could get in the way. But they put this on for like cavalry use. The idea with a short rifle is it can either be used as an infantry weapon, in which case you'd use the lower swivel, or a cavalry or other special type kind of carry gun and you'd use the side. Of course, in the front, we have two swivels again, one on the side, one on the bottom, both on the same barrel band, for the same reason. So, not an especially unique gun. Um, the short rifle concept wasn't brand new in 1924. However, it's worth noting that Germany had not switched to this yet. They had the, the Car 98A, yes, but that was officially a carbine, and it really wasn't in production anymore. They had the Car 98B, which is a long rifle by any other name. But of course, Britain with the Enfield SMLE Mark III, or the USA with the Springfield 1903, were already short rifles, although a little bit longer than this. But it was still a relatively new concept that not all armies had adopted, so that gave it a leg up. The double swing swivels helped, but really where Bruno shown was quality. They made these guns to a very high standard, very smooth moving parts, very reliable, very durable. They just made a damn good gun. And they were willing to custom and do orders. They were more or less in neutral power. They didn't have a lot of old axes to grind. And of course Germany couldn't produce a lot of guns after World War I because of the Treaty of Versailles. So on and so forth. So not only did they see very quick adoption by the Czechoslovakian army, they saw tons of foreign contracts beginning in 1925 and just really running through the end of the production. I'm not going to ramble off all of them here because there's a huge list. These guns got around. But I will say that Yugoslavia, and that's why we have that gun there, we'll talk about in a minute, would purchase about 40,000 designating them as the M24. You would see a number make it over to Spain during their civil war. Romania would be a very late adopter, but would also adopt about half a million. China would be an early adopter and would buy these for over 10 years, picking up just a smidge under 200,000. There's a little bit of debate about Japan's use of these. They definitely use them, the, the navies, definitely. But some sources claim that the Japanese Navy placed a contract for 40000 Others said they acquired them all from China. Iran would purchase these, as well as a license to manufacture. That's where the Persian Mauser kind of hails from. In South America, many nations, Bolivia, Colombia, Brazil, Venezuela, on and on, Argentina, would buy contracts of these. Now, most of the South American ones were chambered for 7mm Mauser, 7x57, seven a little smaller, very accurate round. And a few would even be chambered, a few contracts, I should say, would be even chambered for 7.65 Argentinian, which originally was actually 7.65. 6.5 Belgian. That's a story for another day. So they would do these in different calibers. And it goes on and on and on. Very popular guns. Seeing use literally all around the globe. But the only place I can't think of is North America. And even today, I guess you could say they did because a lot of surplus ones like this came around. Well, as we know, the Germans came over in 1938 to Czechoslovakia, and they were just the worst house guests ever. They didn't leave. They, they put their boots up on the sofa. They used the dishes. They didn't wash them. They were just horrible house guests that didn't leave. Okay, being serious, yes, Germany occupied Czechoslovakia. And this gun, to that point in 1938, 
they had built at least 750 to 800,000. But after the German occupation, we don't really know how many were built. Probably at least another 300,000 because Germ the Nazis would keep the Bruno factory rolling with these because for one, it was very similar to their gun. So it was just a smart idea. And for another, they would have contracts. For example, the Japanese contract, if it existed, happened under this time. Also, the Romanian contract would be in this time period because Romania was an ally. And this would really continue under the name Gewehr 24T, T standing for Czechoslovakia, or just G 24T. And more or less this form originally. Now they would start to replace the hardwood stock with laminate. They would start to go to a cup to butt plate around 19, I think 41 there. And they would integrate a German style sling system as well as the donut and the stock for a takedown. So they would modify these, the G24T to some extent later on in production. Speaking of, like I said, this is an early production, relatively so, German Car 98K. Now, like I said, the VZ24 came out in 1924. The first real K98Ks went into production in 1934, so a full decade later, and they did a very close job of mimicking the VZ24. Now, to be fair, both were inspired by the Car 98 a, and this gun does have more Gewehr features than people give it credit for. We still have a short barrel, although it's a little bit longer. It's about 23.4. Early guns had no sight protector. Later would have the loop like you see on the Yugo. Cleaning rod, bayonet lug. The uh, front band is similar. Now the rear band is also held on by a spring, unlike the screw type. And we have the short upper handguard, which is kind of a holdover from the Gewehr 98, so that's different. And we don't have grasping grooves. We do have a flat rear sight, though. And we have a turn-down bolt handle. I'd say this is one improvement they definitely made to the whole pattern with the relief in the stock so you could grasp it. The bottom here is very similar. We have screws. Semi-pistol grip. And then, of course, the German sling system. Now, the early guns, of course, had the flat butt plates with the cupped ones appearing in 41, 40, 41 in that period. Early guns would be hardwood furniture, but then Germany would switch over to laminate around 1937. So you can see the influences here, but you can also see how this is a little different than the Czech gun. Also, handling it for minor reasons, I would say it is just a little bit lighter, I'm trying to pick it up again, than the check gun. Yeah, this is a little heavier. Uh, the stock's a little beefier back here. We've got metal swivels, no cutout. The forearm is definitely a little beefier with a longer upper handguard. This does have a little more weight to it. But it's interesting how close they were and really you can't say that Germany did not have experience with these because they were really all over the place by the 1930s. Well, production would continue until 1942 at Bruno under Nazi occupation, and they would continue to kind of put guns together from leftover parts through about 43, give or take. But eventually Germany would more or less forced them to switch the entire production line over to the VZ-98, which was essentially a copy of a relatively late war Car 98K. So the VZ-24 would be dropped mid-war and really never resumed in Czechoslovakia. After the war, they would produce the VZ-98N, but this was basically a slightly altered version of the original vz 98, which was an altered version of the Car 98K. So the VZ24 was in production from 1924 to 1942-43 in that time period. So 
a little under 20 years. In that time period, we don't know exactly how many were made, but it was at least a million, probably about 1.1 to 1.2 million. Very successful design for the interwar period when there was so many surplus guns so cheap to compete with. Now the last gun I brought on the table is that Yugoslavian gun, because this is something that people are very familiar with, because there's several Yugo guns. Like I said, Yugoslavia had a relatively large purchase, 40, maybe 50,000 VZ-24s that they designated as the M24. They would start kind of their own licensed production version as the M2447, which is quite close to the Czech gun. A little different, you know, there, there are differences, but yeah. Then they would move over to the M48 here, which is an interesting amalgamation of features from the German and the Czech. For example, we have the German style hooded front sight, landing rod. Barrel band's the same. We have a German style kind of rear barrel band, but then we have a full length upper hand guard, very VZ. We have a turn down bolt. This is actually flat bottomed, so there doesn't have to be a cutout in the stock. The stock doesn't have the grasping grooves, but interestingly, it's a very thick profile, more like the VZ-24. This is a heavier gun. It has the thicker wood. On the other hand, it does have the pass-through sling swivel slot here. So it's a German-style swivel arrangement. And we have the German-style cupped butt plate. But we don't have the German-style takedown disc. And this was really one of the last Mausers to really go into mass production and see military use because these were made in the late 40s, early 50s. And it really shows the VZ-24's influence. And if I had a 2447, you'd really see it. As I said, Persia, today Iran, would also do a, a copy Romania would end up with a, a large number. Early ones would have a crest, later ones would not, and many were refurbished and scrubbed and reworked after the war. A few years ago, AIM had some of these Romanian guns. Again, very similar, same basic pattern, a few little differences, mostly in the markings and serials. And this contract was mostly 1938, 39, and then some into the 1940s, and they would have several hundred thousand. Now the refurbishment they went through was very similar to what Russian refurbed Car 98Ks would go through. They would have kind of a black, thick bluing. They would have kind of the stocks kind of oiled finish and kind of sanded down a bit. Very noticeable and again they would usually scrub off any kind of crest up here. Russia would capture a large number of VZ-24s either from the Germans, who did acquire a large number from the Czechs, or from the Romanian forces in fighting in the east. And a lot of these will turn up in Russian capture batches of K-98s, or you'll see a K-98, but it'll have a VZ-24 <laughs> straight bolt in it. So if you see a Russian capture K-98K with a straight bolt, that's what happened. It could have also had an earlier Gewehr bolt, but probably very likely it's a VZ-24 check bolt. These would stay in service in many places through the 50s, even though they were no longer being produced or purchased. And many were not surplused out until well into the age of semi-autos. There's a lot more to say, especially contracts, names, numbers, dates. You can look that up. You know I don't really have notes to look at here. I just wing it on these vids, so take it for what it's worth. But I wanted to present this because this one just came in the shop. I've had a number of EZ-24s over the years. This is one of the nicer ones. The only flaw, the serial on the bolt doesn't match, which is pretty common for this import batch. The AIM ones, which I said had been refurbished, tended to be matching, but they were heavily refurbished. I like this one, it's a Czech military, it's got the discs, 
both swivels are intact. Got the front sight protector. That's neat. These aren't crazy money, especially for the quality. They're not a Car 98K. There are differences, as we pointed out, but they are a very high quality gun. And if you buy one, it was either made before World War II or during World War II. They're all pretty much guaranteed to be, you know, pre-post-war period, one way or the other. So it's a fun gun to shoot. Century did import quite a few guns in 7mm out of South America a few years back, about 10 years ago. So if you'd rather have it in 7mm, they're out there. Guns like this were imported in the 1990s. There's a small import mark on the barrel on these. More recent ones will have the bill, big billboard. And inner arms did bring over a large number from Spain in the 50s and 60s. So there are a few different waves of VZ-24s just depending on when and where they came from. It's definitely something to look for. And if you're like us and just like check guns, these do end up making to be great shooters most of the time if they're not just beat up and shot out. The bolt, while the straight handle's a little awkward, it's almost always very smooth. These have nice triggers for a military gun. The only thing I'd say to look for, a good bit of the time these have been counterboard. So you might just check the board before buying. I'm not saying avoid it if it's counterboard, but hey, if it is, that might be a negotiating point for a better price. And to wrap up, price. You know, price on surplus is really hard to estimate. Once upon a time, these were pretty affordable, 100 bucks, like most surplus. They were a little less than German just because they weren't German, but people respected the Bruno, the CZ name. Today, it seems like they start off in the 300 range for kind of beater versions and can climb up to 500, depending on condition. Uh, the crest here adds quite a bit. Matching adds a good bit. Overall condition, if it's been refurbished, adds a bit. So, you know, there are factors to think about, but yeah. Now, there's a lot on the serial number as well because they use prefixes and suffixes on these, and that can tell you a great deal about which contract it came from. For me, I'm interested in the Japanese contracts. You know, that's kind of neat. This isn't one of those. But, you know, I like Japanese guns. Well, if you have a VZ-24 of your own, we'd love to hear about it below. Feel free to share pictures, comments, histories. I know Jay has one of these, too. If you have any questions, we'll do our best to answer them. Please post them. If you like the video, we always appreciate a like, click. And if you'd like to help support the channel, we'd really appreciate if you check out the link to our Patreon page. As always, this is Misha, and we will very shortly catch you next time.